Things get interesting in the world of artificial intelligence in a couple of different capacities of varying from copyright over to actual software that can identify students that are using the uh, artificial intelligence for creating content. Also, there is some additional news coming out from uh, great news sources like LaterPress.com, uh, Fictionary, and as well as uh, the famous Victoria Strauss of A uh, Writer Beware. We're going to talk about all that in today's self-publishing news for March the 27th, 2023. Okay, let's just jump right into things because boy, this is it, it's going to be a short but very impactful one here because we're going to be talking about some really, really cool things. Let's lead the cause here or lead the uh, news with uh, audiobook usage has increased by 70% in 2022. This comes by way of Good E-Reader. And in the article, they kind of discuss a little bit about some of the information that has rolled out from Audio Publishing Association. Kind of wish they would have left some links to some of these things, but uh, here we are. I could probably just Google this information up. But it's fairly interesting to hear the percentage of Americans 12 and older who have listened to internet audio in the past week grew by three percentage points to 70%, according to Edison's most recent statistics, which is about 200 million people. That is pretty friggin' cool. The 23 to 34 age group leads with 89% of the market, followed by 35 to 54 with 85% and 55 and older with 50, uh, 55 and older, excuse me, with 53%. According to the chart of individuals who have listened to internet audio in the past month, the number of people who have listened to an audiobook in the past year jumped an impressive seven percentage points to 35%, roughly 100 million Americans. A couple of bullet points for me to kind of, you know, go over here. That's fairly in interesting. Since 2017, the total amount of time spent listening to audio for audiobooks has increased over 106% compared to other audio formats. Daily audiobook listeners spend the most time listening to books uh, as opposed to radio, podcasts, etc. The number of people who subscribe to audiobook services has climbed with 41% of listeners saying they do so. Uh, everyday audiobook listeners listen to audio content for 12 plus hours longer each day than the general public and up from 44% in 2020, 45% of Americans aged 18 and over have ever listened to an audiobook. So if you've been on the fence and you've been holding back with publishing audiobooks, there's a good reason why I keep saying that this is an avenue for you to consider doing. Now, uh, for whatever, you know, reluctance that I have when it comes to artificial intelligence, there are some artificial intelligence uh, voiceover narration type uh, services that you can get that are usually pretty cost effective. And that could probably be something that could serve you until you could afford a professional voiceover artist. Um, you know, just know that this is definitely an avenue for you to consider. So if you haven't been publishing audiobooks, now is a great time. You really need to get in on this because the authors that do this are working at a greater advantage than those that don't. Um, so just understand, I, I, I completely get it. If you can't afford that, that type of discretionary expense, I get it 100%, but definitely put it on your radar for right now. All right, let's go a little further forward here from the fine folks over at Fictionary. By the way, you can turn your first draft into a bestseller with Fictionary's story editing software. A very interesting company. I've yet to get the chance to play around with their software, but I will get to that eventually and I'll let you guys know how that goes. But they sent a link out here more recently from the folks over at Book Baby with their six month book publishing plan. This calendar planner will help you get over the publishing line in 180 days. You're halfway through your manuscript. That's excellent. Now it's time to buckle down, wrap it up and get your book to market. There's a lot to do, but with dedication and commitment, you can finish and promote your book in six months. We'll help you plan to finish your manuscript, get professional editing, review and complete your draft, get your book to production, and get distributed to retail and pre-sale. Launch your book. Oh, that's probably the best part of a six-month book publishing plan. This is a 100% free guide, folks. You got, of course, part ways with some of your information, um, but uh, you don't have to have any money for that specific guide. I highly recommend. Go check it out. It's definitely worth looking into. And if you check out Fictionary, let me know how that goes. I am definitely interested in playing around with their software. I'm going to be talking with one of their reps here in the coming weeks, and I'll report back to you guys as soon as humanly possible. Let's get to the uh, task at hand, talking about artificial intelligence. I think a lot of people have misunderstood me in the past and that I'm anti-AI, and that's not the case. I am just a little reluctant because 
it is so new and everybody's just hyping up about it. Artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. I'm going to go get my stuff done with mid journey. I'm going to go get my stuff done with chat GPT. But folks, it is so new that there is a lot of laws and legislations that need to be put into place to make it a bit more secure. Because right now it's the wild west and people are going buck wild crazy over it. And one of the things that I knew would become an issue is copyright. And this is a piece that makes a lot of sense coming from the fine folks over at the Alliance of Independent Authors. They are talking about the U.S. Copyright Office issues guidance on AI and copyright. So let me just summarize this piece here for you instead of just reading it for you like I did in these past ones here. They essentially said that if you have strictly AI generated text, you cannot do a copyright. You can't register a copyright on it. You must have some type of control over how that specific type of text or content is made. Um, so if you're, you're going in and you're fine tuning some of what you're getting through AI, they're saying, okay, that's a little bit better. So if you're creating something that is derivative of what you're getting from the chat GPT or any of these other AI creating uh, software out there, then fantastic. But if you're strictly just doing uh, AI content by itself, it just, there's no copyright for it. You can't copyright it. Now, there's probably some of you out there saying, but what if they can't tell? I'm glad you brought that up. Because what we're now finding is Barnes & Noble Education launches an AI content detector on Bartleby. Now, you're probably saying to yourselves, Dale, what does Barnes & Noble Education have to do with anything when it comes to AI and self-publishing? This is me saying that right now, they're creating software to vet any type of publications or any type of content out there that could be created by AI. And to my understanding as well, Google actually has something in place that there are now starting to suppress websites that are using AI generated text for their websites. So now we're looking at Barnes and Noble Education addressing the concern from an educational standpoint with a new service called Identify. Now it's spelled I-D-E-N-T-I-F. AI. Yeah. So it's, it's not like the regular spelling of identify. It is a free AI content detector. The tool is currently in beta and will be available via, via Bartleby writes online platform later this month. And essentially what they're trying to do is nip this in the bud because there's no way for the educators to fully understand or know that their students are understanding what they're learning and applying it right if they're just simply going and doing a couple of prompts through chat GPT or any of these other, uh, you know, writing type software with artificial intelligence. And if this is already in beta, I'm starting to really believe that we're going to possibly see that type of stuff roll out everywhere else. So Amazon probably is going to catch up to that. I think that there's going to be the other companies that are going to catch up to that. So if you are right now using AI to create 100% of the text that you're publishing online, I might recommend you pump your brakes and start to think about, okay, I could create this with AI. There's no issues. Go ahead and do that. But what you're going to want to really do is take the time and put a human touch to what you're getting with the artificial intelligence. I understand a lot of you out there are like, oh, I don't want to fuss with that. I don't want to bother. But here's the thing. You're going for the quick buck now. That's great for the short term. But in the long term, you're going to be out. That's it. You're going to be up a creek without a paddle, as my mom used to say. And I don't want you guys to be in that particular position. Now, if you're utilizing artificial intelligence for just, you know, greasing creative wheels to, to get your first draft going, maybe you need an outline, or maybe there's some passage that you're kind of getting stuck on. You're like, ah, this needs to be reworded. Great. Use chat GPT. That's fantastic. Use any type of AI text generating software out there. Or let's say for instance, you're like, Ooh, I've got this idea for a cover design, a cover graphic, I'm gonna go use Midjourney for it. It's a good idea to do that, but in the same instance, remember, they're being dragged to court right now. They're being sued by a lot of different companies that aren't happy with them dipping into their pool of image and graphics without their permission. So what I would say is, instead of using that for your final end product, that you create some type of a derivative of it. You give it over to a graphic designer. You give it to somebody that can 
make it a little bit different, all right? So that it is uniquely yours instead of just let's rely on this artificial intelligence to run our entire business. Folks, it's just a recipe for disaster. I am pro AI. I think it's awesome. I think there's many great uses for it, but you might want to slow the roll in which you're doing it if you're relying 100% on it for creating content. And Barnes and Noble Education, I think at this point, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get deeper here, folks, and it's going to get pretty ugly before it gets any better. All right, let's move further forward because I actually got some pretty good news here for you coming from the fine folks over at Publisher Rocket. Uh, Dave over at Kindlepreneur actually just announced not too long ago, uh, actually it was this past week, I believe, that there is the new historical data for categories that's made available. And uh, well, tucked in that data is a little feature they don't want you to overlook, a list of large publishers in that category. So when you actually hover over top of that specific area inside the graph, it'll say large publisher when you click on it, the best-selling publishers in this category, it's gonna show you all of the different books that are doing really good with TradPub. And so you can navigate to the category data and Publisher Rocket, hover over the I icon and large, large publisher card, take note of all the major publishers that have bestsellers in that category. And if you're looking to work with those companies, start reaching out to editors at those companies or finding agents who work with those companies. That is next level thinking. To me, honestly, I've never been interested in something like that, but I know there's a lot of authors out there that are self-published that are still really wanting to do trad pub, and that's totally fine. I don't want to ever demonize or make you feel bad that you want to you know, pursue a career in traditional publishing. That's fantastic. Go for it. I'm the self-publishing guy. If I ever do trad pub, fantastic. But right now, I like what I'm doing. I like 100% control. But here's the cool thing is Publisher Rocket just makes it super easy for you. By the way, you can go get access to Publisher Rocket. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy with it, go on over to my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash rocket. By the way, all the links for everything I'm discussing is going to be, of course, inside the show notes. Big thank you over to laterpress.com, folks. You want a new way to publish your books, go take a look at them. Big shout out to my boy, Nate Gill over there. Nate's a good guy. Um, he's the one who got me introduced to Later Press. Fantastic organization. They're starting to really grow in leaps and bounds. I'm looking for you, Later Press, to, to start hosting some audiobooks. What you doing? Come on, get with me here. I want to see some downloadable audiobooks if you can. But they actually sent me a, um, an email this past week bringing up something that I've discussed on this channel, actually even on the main channel, about a few years ago. So it appears that uh, the judge appears skeptical of Internet Archive Scanning and Lending Program. Now, this has been three years ago, back in 2020. Uh, it, we came to find out that the Internet Archives, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, uh, I believe it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit organization, and they make a lot of things 100% free. If you've ever heard of the Wayback Machine, uh, essentially Internet Archives is doing it. Well, Internet Archive decided, you know what, we're going to help out libraries through a program. Now, I'm, I'm thinking it was like something like commercial digital licensing or something like that. CDL was like the, the uh, abbreviation for it. What it was doing was it was taking older books or books not having uh, any type of like ebook support in a given library, and they're scanning the print versions of these books and making that available to the patrons for the library. Now, um, so that means essentially they're dipping, double dipping. They're paying for the physical book that they can, you know, lend out. But now they're using the digital version. So essentially it's almost like me going and buying, let's say, a CD. And then I just go ahead and make a copy and give it out to everybody. Internet Archive believes that, oh, well, this isn't hurting anything. No, you're essentially taking ebooks and you are making them available without paying the author or the publishing company for that. Well, it appears that they're, it's finally come to a head. Um, they're finally starting to kind of get things underway. And apparently the judge that's in charge of this is not feeling too good about the Internet Archive's stance and what they're doing. But we are looking at the fact that um, this trial is is not over. It's just beginning. And they're starting to say whether or not they're going to get a summary judgment or not. Meaning, are, are we going to go to trial or are we just going to say and just call it quits on this one? 
So uh, this is a fairly interesting article. Now, a lot of people will say, Dale, it's not a big deal. It's not a really big deal because they're taking some trad pub books and making them digital and it's not affecting the self publishers bottom line. I totally get that. But what type of a precedent are we setting? in saying that it's okay to buy the print book and then copy it and make it 100% free as an ebook. What type of a precedent? Because at that point, we'll be able to start taking, say, print books and scanning it, having artificial intelligence reading it as a voiceover, and then now we're starting to lose those sales as well. We have to put a, you know, we have to just really put our foot down. We have to make our stance known as authors that this is not okay. Now, those of you out there that feel I'm greedy or that I'm just reaching for things probably don't understand what it is to be an author and to pay your bills as an author. And you might not view this as a job, quote unquote, but this is a job for a lot of us out here. And though you might not think, oh gosh, this is not a big deal. They already paid you for the print book. Yeah, but it's a different medium. You are taking from a different pile of stuff and there's different rights and diff different distribution rights on that. So if we allow something like this to kind of go through, it's going to set a whole new precedent and it's going to open up a whole cavalcade of issues and it's going to be an absolute mess. So I'm hoping that the judge that's in charge of this shuts this down and tells Internet Archives, no, that's not good. That's not okay. And speaking of not okay, let's go on over to Writer Beware, Victoria Strauss, absolutely one of the best people that you can follow in the industry. Highly recommend you go check out writer, writerbeware.blog to get some information. She wanted to let you know an alert on scammers impersonating video streaming services with fake job offers. Now, apparently this was something that happened not too long ago that some some people were impersonating Acorn TV and just reaching out to people and saying, hey, we'd like to interview you to become part of our team. And yeah, well, people were finding out it was a way that they were fishing for information. Because naturally, if you go and apply for this job, what are you going to put in there? A lot of sensitive information that in turn, they're going to be able to use in the black market or wherever else they want to do for their nefarious reasons. Well, it was Acorn TV. Now it's actually switched over to another one called Minnow. And there is a full, like you could see the whole texting conversation that was involved in it, as well as the very laughable email that was sent out to people. Uh, we are we are very pleased to offer you a position of story writer at Minnow Kids Incorporation Company. This is a remote position of $4,000 monthly payment, which by the way, that's not too bad. As a remote employee, you are entitled to the company benefits benefit packages, a reward bonus of $3,000 for every of your story turns into a movie and recognition perks. Yeah. I'm reading this, by the way, verbatim here, folks. I, I, it's not just me speaking out of turn here. Entitled to writing materials and strategic content writer workstation. I would appreciate your signing and returning it at earliest convenience a copy of this letter. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me in the workspace. Yeah, um, folks, this is so important. I understand that you are so passionate about your business as an author. But don't let that passion cloud your judgment because there's going to be a lot of nefarious people that are going to reach out to you via email. I'm going to tell you this. I get a lot, a lot being in the position I am in YouTube, a ton of these scammers that are doing it. And in fact, not too long ago, actually, it's been just a big problem on YouTube. A lot of YouTubers are getting their accounts stolen by hackers because they're doing something as simple as believing, oh, this is a contract uh, that this company is sending to me. This is a big company. I'm going to go ahead and download it so I can read it. Uh, well, that happened to a very large channel called Linus Tech Tips. And actually, it was three of Linus's channels that ended up getting hacked because one of his workers had looked at a contract, downloaded it, and it essentially gave them 100% access and the keys to the kingdom. By the way, I've oversimplified that. You're probably saying, what does this YouTuber thing have to do with writers anyway? It has to do with understanding that there are predatory practices that you need to be very much on alert for. Be skeptical. No matter who you get an email with, you should always question it. Look at what's inside 
the who's who's the email coming from can you be able to look in the header you need to really dig deep into an email and understand there are some people and a lot of people out there that are going to want to take you for a ride and i definitely want you to be very very cautious of something like that so if you happen to see anything come from acorn tv or minnow just go ahead and toss that into spam all right, you know what's not spam is the fine folks over ebook fairs. Actually, Kenny Myers just reached out to me recently and they just rolled out a new AI based name game. Uh, to kind of summarize what they said, all of us characters, or all of us authors are essentially looking for some type of names that we want to include. And it can focus on gender, character type, dominant personality type, uh, prominent physical trait, country of origin, social status special request and year of birth because it's important that when you are making characters you got to understand what is this age range what is going to be the name for it because if you're in my generation you know uh of being a generation xer if you will uh you're not going to hear many girls or women named edith there's going to be some but for the most part you know or myrtle you know those aren't going to fit but you're going to probably see you know, names like, let's say, Sarah or Jasmine or, you know, any of those other ones. And, you know, understanding, by the way, I'm, I'm terrible at know, knowing, you know, my generation's names. But just to kind of illustrate a point, this is kind of a neat little thing, a great way to leverage AI, a great way. Like, you know, I've said this, you know, before, don't hate AI. I, I don't, I really don't. I think this is kind of a cool little feature that you can utilize over on ebookfairs.com. By the way, folks, you can go ahead and get yourself access to these this virtual book um, books affair uh, service called Ebook Fairs when you visit my uh, affiliate link at dailinks.com slash ebookfairs. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about, folks. And coming from the folks over at Written Word Media, they want to talk about how to make a book marketing plan. This is an exhaustive piece. It is really, really good. They talk about how to make the marketing plan, and they talk about being intentional, setting goals, do what works, and analyze the data, getting organized, what gets organized and means, all that type of stuff. And instead of me regurgitating this very thorough piece and go and read the comments, by the way, uh, I was just going to go ahead and send you on over to the show notes. And as we start to wrap up today's self-publishing news, of course, I'm going to do a quick little self-promotion here. You've heard of my video on demand service. If you haven't, what are you doing with yourself? Go on over to check out the self-publishing hub, my new video on demand service with hundreds of videos at this point, as well as hours of footage. You can get it for $9.99 per month. Start it whenever you want to cancel whenever you like. There is no obligation to you. You're going to find a lot of really cool things that you can be able to see nowhere else. And hey, by the way, there's no ads. There's no ads. It's like YouTube on steroids. Like you literally go over there and you're going to be able to watch some uh, videos that you are not able to see on YouTube. And that's going to be over at theselfpublishinghub.com. Remember, T-H-E, the selfpublishinghub.com to get yourself set up with that. And in the meantime, what did you think about today's self-publishing news? Was there any particular piece of news that you enjoyed the most? Make sure you join me over in our Discord community at dalelinks.com slash Discord to let me know your thoughts. Definitely would love to hear from you.